I'm prone to just jump in and solve things and do it myself because it's quicker yep. for me to do it. But yep. then after I do that 20 times a day, yep. then I'm bogged down. I used to hate attorneys. Okay, maybe hate is a little strong, but I didn't totally see their value and I didn't trust them for the most part. But just a couple of months ago, I found myself in a situation where I really needed some help. So I reached out to this business attorney that I recently met, and let's just say my perspective on attorneys has completely changed. Now, dealing with this situation and other things that I've been through through the past almost 20 years of business has really caused me to think and reflect about different times, thinking, oh man, only if I had a good attorney at that time. and makes me super excited for the future knowing that I can have a good attorney at my back whenever I need him. Now, I have a lot that I want to talk to Greg about, and he's agreed to come on the podcast sometime, but that's not what today is all about. Recently, Greg started listening to the Millionaire University podcast, and last week he reached out to me to see if I could talk to him about some things, do some consulting, soundboarding, pick my brain, if you will. And I, of course, happily said yes. After everything he's done for me, it was a no-brainer. Now, I'm kind of an audio content recording geek, so we happened to record this call, and Tara overheard most of it, and afterwards she was like, man, if everyone could hear the things you guys talked about, that would be so helpful to so many people. So many people struggle with those exact same things. So I reached out to Greg to ask his permission to share this personal call that him and I had together, and he graciously agreed to let me share the call with you on today's podcast. So that's what we have for you guys today. Now, Greg's a super high-level guy who works with some pretty high-level clients. I mean, some names even that you would actually know who they are if I mentioned them to you. But we all have things that we need and want to improve in our business. And sometimes having an outside perspective is just what it takes to help you get to the next level. At the end, I'll hop back on and we'll go over some key takeaways. But I hope you enjoy this call as much as we did. And without any further ado, I give you Greg Nelson of Weeks Nelson Law Firm. So the kids and everybody's loving being over there right now? Yeah, it's been great, man. I was like, hey, we're going to be traveling, so we might be super busy, but we actually have more time because we no longer have a house. We don't have any other responsibilities other than just work and it's like we did have more time. Did you sell all your cars and furniture or did you store it? We sold everything except for we got like a small storage unit. We just kept some like memorabilia and like a few basic items. That's cool. Yeah, it's kind of cool. We've just been getting up at six, exercising, getting our day going. And then we finish around one or two and go snorkeling or on an adventure. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking some time to follow up with me. I, honestly, your invitation to follow up is motivating me to think all weekend about what do I need to do to refocus and make my work more efficient. So it was actually helpful. I appreciate that. Awesome. You bet. So I don't know if there's something on your mind. Otherwise, there's like maybe something rattling around my mind. And I don't want to take a ton of your time, but if I could pick your brain for 15 minutes once a week or so, I'd love to do that to just get your perspective on, hey, you might consider doing something different. 100%. Yeah. What I found is most people have a pretty good idea of what they want. They just don't usually work through it enough to where they actually go and do that. They have an idea of what they want if you really dig into their brain, but they're just so used to, they don't talk to people about it. And so then when anytime anyone asks them to do anything, they just go and do that thing, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone has needs and agendas and different things. And if you don't have your own agenda, especially someone who's like self-employed, that's a blessing and a curse. You don't work for a boss, but you are your own boss. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you're your worst boss because you allow yourself to do whatever anyone wants you to do at any given time, regardless of if it aligns with your long-term goals and vision. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, having like an accountability partner or someone just a soundboard, I probably won't tell you a ton of things you don't already know. It's just like you said, our brains are wired to solve problems. So if you give it the problem to solve that equals the actual things that you really want in life, and then you know you're going to talk to someone about that. You're going to think about those things. Mm -hmm. um, it's like Tara and I have been to counseling, you know, a couple times. And <laughs> I don't know that the counselors we've ever talked to have been like these amazing counselors, but it causes us to think about those things 
you know, improving our marriage and we're focused on it. And so we True. improve it. Right. So yeah, the very first day you and I met, you're like, Oh, maybe you could help me. I'm like, maybe you're a high level guy. Right. It's not like me going and talking to my kids and be like, Hey, you need to do this and this and this. You kind of know what you want. I think it's just having someone else to soundboard with and occasionally be like, have you considered this? Like, okay. So mm-hmm. just those small reconfigurations towards your actual goal. It's like the whole flying on an airplane. If you go one degree this way, you're going to end up in a different place, right? So just the mm-hmm. constant, okay, here's our vision. Here's our goal. Here's where you want to go. Making the small little incremental changes that will get you there. Right. So yeah, I'm happy to do that with you each week. Well, let me tell you where I'm at. I'll give you my two minute spiel with it culminating in what's the frustrating part for me. And maybe there's like one specific thought at the end of that to maybe talk about. Okay. So when I started working as an attorney, just an associate, working with my father-in-law, and basically he just kind of let me do anything that I wanted to do and as much as I wanted to do. Yeah. And as he kind of retired, I took on some other clients and it's just grown. Like I don't do any marketing. There's no website. There's no active marketing. It's just always been word of mouth. Uh, uh-huh. friend of friends, and it's been fantastic. It's been great. I've gotten so busy, though, with a bunch of these things. I've brought on a couple of associates with my end goal being I want to be focused work like four or five hours. Yep. And the other time, let me be at the driving range or the golf course or working out or walking or whatever so that my mind 100%. can just think about other things related yep. to work but not actually doing the work. Uh-huh. So – Hired a couple of associates, and what I found is I'm the log jam to everything. Yeah. My inbox, you know, there's stuff that I think could go to them. You know, it's about developing trust with them to make sure I'm comfortable with them, talking to the client. You said something in one of your podcasts I listened to over the weekend about come to me with situations and solutions. I don't want to hear the problems and the questions. Yes. You go work on stuff yourself. That's a very yep. key thing. More often than not, I'm prone to just jump in and solve things and do it myself because it's quicker yep. for me to do it. But then yep. after I do that 20 times a day, yep. then I'm bogged down. So yesterday is a prime example. I woke up over the weekend. I had gotten mailbox cleaned up. There's maybe six or ten things that still needed attention. And 7 o'clock in the morning, I take off to take Quincy somewhere. I come back at 9 o'clock, and I've got 80 emails in my inbox, other things wow. that need attention. I got through an hour of time, and I cleared out all that, and I had run a pickup queue and came back. And I had another 70 things in my inbox that needed Jeez. attention. And I'm just like, okay, this is the problem because it's sitting there. Some of it they can take care of, some they can't. You know, the constant communication that comes in from people of things that need attention, yep. right? So what I did over the weekend, I talked with a buddy of mine. He does executive coaching, similar mm-hmm. to you, but different, mm-hmm. in the legal profession, and I've been talking with him on the side, of, and he's talked about, hey, what's your goal? What's your vision? What do you want to get to? We identified that, which is what I expressed to you. I want to get to where yeah. I'm working four hours of actual work, and then the rest of my day is business development, productivity, just having time to think about cases and strategize rather than doing the work. Totally. And so the first step I've been working on is identifying what the values are for the firm. And then I went through over the weekend, and I revised and updated the list of which clients I want each of the associates to be point of contact on. And in doing that, I sent it to them, asked them to revise if they thought to, and I said, hey, listen, for me to make my goal efficient, I need to empower you guys to be primary point of contact on these things, take the responsibility, go work through the problems, come to me when you need advice and guidance, prioritization, strategy, whatever, but otherwise yep. manage it and copy it on my hand. Okay, so I've done that. I need to keep following through on that. You know, I need to be committed to letting them handle these clients and these things. Mm-hmm. The question I come back to is, how do I make it so that my mailbox is not the log jam for everybody? Um, well, it depends, obviously, where those emails are coming from. But I think what you'll find is as you empower, because I assume most of them are from your associates and from cases, As you empower your associates to handle these cases and work with the clients, they're going to be the ones who are going to develop those relationships. People depend on you because you're the one who's built up all that trust with them. I'm not an attorney. I don't know exactly how it works, but these are legit attorneys, right? There's no reason why someone can't work with them from the beginning. So I'll give an exact example. 
Like when I reached out to you and I'm, you know, I'm glad you did it because I'm glad we developed this relationship, but that's how everyone's going to feel. And there's only one great to go around. Right. So you easily could have said like, okay, let's hop on a call and you could have Greg hop on and you could say, okay, so Greg's going to work with you guys. If he ever needs me, I'll hop on. Right. But you can even get to the point where people don't even build a relationship with you. And that's hard because we like building relationships with people. And so you can get to the point where they mainly depend on that person. Right. So there's all different kinds of levels here, but the more they develop a relationship with that person, the more they're going to want to work with that person, the less, you're going to be seeing emails or included in emails, or maybe at first you're kind of carbon copied, but you're like, okay, I don't need to worry about this. Someone else has got it. And Mm -hmm. it's going to have to be disciplined on your end because you're going to want to get involved and your goal is to not get involved. You're going to have to either not see the emails, you're going to have to not get involved. But even like you mentioned that they're going to handle these different cases and then come to you when they have questions, just make sure and almost joke about it. That's what we did with our company was, Anytime they'd ask a question, I'm like, wait, is that a question? And then they'd kind of laugh. And then they'd say, okay, this is what I think we should do. Or, okay, I need to think through this some more and I'll come back to you. So there's a phrase I use a lot called ROTI, return on time invested. Mm. Like you said, it's going to be annoying because at the beginning, it's going to take you more time to put these systems and processes into place or, or to communicate this to them. You're like, I can just take care of myself, right? That's what most people do. But then in the long haul, and actually, it's not even that long. You'll be surprised because you're working with high-level people. You will start to see a return on that time invested very quickly. Because the thing is, the people that work for you are probably a lot smarter than you realize. They're a lot more capable. You probably know they're capable. They are. So I'm going to be honest, and we all do it, so I'm not just pointing at you. It's an ego thing, right? We all get validation from feeling like people need me. But you got to change that identity that you have from being the person that people need up front to being servant leader, meaning a lot of times people hear servant leader and they think that means I need to lead by example and I need to do everything like in the church where I think we mix that up a lot. But if mm-hmm. you're a bishop and you're the one showing up all the time to do the chairs and you're the meeting, like pretty soon you're going to have a broken family and that's not a good example, right? So to me, the best kind of leadership is I cannot serve you if I don't have any time. Right. But if I empower you to think on your own, which makes them feel better, they prefer that. If I empower you to think on your own, to do these things, and then what happens is over time, they'll come to you with questions or solutions and you'll say, yes, 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 yes. My goal whenever I could, if it was 50 50, was say, yes, do that. Every once in a while, I'd be like, "Eh, maybe do this. But if they're getting like 90, 95% of the things nailed, then they know they don't have to come back and ask you that again next time. Like my assistant, Vanessa, who didn't even have a basic college education, she was nowhere near as literate and educated as your people are. She ran my entire house flipping business, which flipped over 100 houses a year, and we didn't go look at them. And I was working yeah, I remember like you telling four me about hours. That. Yeah. I was, we were putting in a certain time before I started my education business, like four hours a week, which allowed us to start the education business, Right. It wasn't easy getting there, but then once we got there, looking back, I'm like, oh, that wasn't that bad. It's like doing a hike that feels hard at the time, and you look back, you're like, oh, that's not that bad. Like, it's almost too simple to where it's, like, mind-boggling. I think you're a lot closer than you think, honestly. You already have the team, which is the hardest part. It's just a matter of empowering them to do what they already want to do anyway. So I think you'll find your inbox will automatically start to clean up. It might take a minute, but every time they make a decision on their own and do something without Greg, think of it as like a game. Like every time it's a point. And when they get to like 90 points, 90%, they're like 90% don't need you. 95%, 95% don't need you. 100%, they hardly need you at all. And then you're able to go and drum up more business or just think through strategy and like you said, different things, different opportunities. That's what they need you to do. That's wise. That's reassuring. Especially since You've been functioning as a client for a while here to hear that. That's a good thing. Because I think that the concern I always have is I do have these relationships with all these clients. Most of these relationships are personal and and connected. Uh And putting those in other people's hands is kind of like, eh. So I think, uh, but but you do have a good point. I just need to trust the process through. They are competent. They are skilled. And people do respond to being empowered. Kind of like when I started. They let me do as much as I wanted to do. 
and I would come to yep. them when I don't know what to do. Exactly. And that made for a fun working environment for me. Yeah. The little I know of Greg, I'm probably wrong on this, but he could probably run your entire law firm, you know, and, and I'm sure you have five people that are the same or other mm-hmm. people that are the same. Mm-hmm. Um, that he's, he's a smart dude. You know, mm-hmm. I would be, I'm once again, I'm glad we got to work with you. But if you're like, Hey, you're working with Greg from now on, I'd be like, cool. Yeah. No problem. I was actually shocked to know that we got both of you. I was like, Oh wow. Like, I'm not going to say no, but it's like, if you think about it, you're both looking at every email. You're both seeing every text. You're both on every call. I don't want to say it's waste, but I would say like 80, 85% is just two really smart, highly intelligent people doing a lot of the same stuff. Thinking. Good point. Thinking is what takes most time in a business or in life. It's like when you get like 10 people together and you're all trying to come up with a solution, sometimes it's a lot easier with a couple people, right? Because you just sure. have more people trying to come up with a solution. It's like by committee and everyone has to agree and all this stuff. I just don't, I don't think it's totally necessary. And I, like I said, I'm a client and I like that I've gotten to know you, but you could have said, okay, this is Greg. He's going to work with you. If you guys ever need anything, he'll be in touch. Sweet. And I think we'd be just fine. So yeah, it's hard to say uh, that. It's probably hard to hear it. And it's hard to say it because I'm glad that we didn't go that route, but you can't work with everyone in the capacity that you'd probably ideally like to. Otherwise there's yeah. no point of having a Greg and all these different people you're working with. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So for today, that's perfect. That's everything cool. that I need to hear. That gives me something to focus. You know, this week, my focus is empowering them more and yep. hunting to them, forcing myself to do less while trusting them to do what they're hired for. It's going to be hard. Remember the phrase, stay in the pocket, which Mm -hmm. I know you know what that means. Mm -hmm. But the day I told Vanessa, because she was in charge of offers and buying houses and all these different things. The day I said, okay, you are now fully in charge of the contractors. I never want to hear from another contractor again. That changed everything for me. But do you think the contractors stopped reaching out to me right away? Heck no. They would call me and it reminds me of when our kids were trying to learn how to sleep through the night and we laid there for hours while they screamed and it was so painful. But then we did that mm. for three days and it changed our life. Right. right. So it's what like, do you do with the you're, contractors when you're making that transition to Vanessa, we made it very clear from the beginning, how it was going to work that you reach out to Vanessa and they already knew Vanessa, but they would just reach out to me whenever they wanted. And I would talk to them and take their calls and it just was taking up a couple hours a day of my time or quite a while. And I said, Vanessa is going to be paying you. She's going to be signing off on all your jobs. You need to reach out to her for everything. But they had this relationship with me, so it was hard. But once Mm -hmm. I stopped taking their calls, they reached out to her. And they built a great relationship with her. And it was even more smooth and better. And she was able to serve them and help them better than I was. And Mm -hmm. ultimately, it was better for everyone. So you know what's interesting hearing that is I've been involved with a lot of companies. I've been basically in-house counsel for a lot of companies. So I've worked with a lot of C-level guys. If you were to bring me into a company and say, hey, Greg, organize this or start a legal department, stuff like that, I could totally do it. And I could see the flaws. I could walk into a company. I could see the flaws in the organization and how to change things. I could do that. For some reason, though, I get hung up over here on my own life because I think a small law practice is different than all these other companies. Like, law is different than business. And I think the reality is, listening to what you're just telling me, it's probably not. I just kind of trust it and see it through. Yep. It's hard to read the label on the outside of the bottle when you're in the bottle. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right? We, it's the same with That's me. Like it, Tara and I were kind of rare in the fact that I might be more business driven than she is, but we've both always been involved in the business. So we're constantly soundboarding. Like if I didn't have her and then the other mentors that I've had, I remember a marketing guy that more than 10 years ago, we hired or we joined his mastermind group, paid him 25 grand. So we go to this mastermind meeting and we're like, Hey, we're trying to grow. We're trying to do this. And that. he's like, well, do you have a high level coaching program? We're like, no, or have a high level mastermind group. We're like, no, because those guys are scamsters and we've paid people money before and they didn't work out good. And he's like, well, you paid me. We're like, yeah, you're different. And he's like, well, are you going to be the scammy guy? You're going to be the helpful one. We're like, Oh no, we'd create good stuff. He's like, well, why would you not charge for it then? 
And so we literally at that event, that very same day or the next day, we went back to our hotel, we made a video, sent out an email, and we signed up 13 people within like 24 to 48 hours who paid us $25,000. We were ready to quit because we were making more money flipping houses than educating. And within a day, we made multiple six figures and it totally changed the trajectory of where that business went. It's so funny that because of our past limiting beliefs that we had based on information that we experienced certain things, we had these certain assumptions, but something to him that was so blatantly obvious, but it was so simple, mm. you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's important to get outside perspective every once in a while. Yeah, that's good. That's good to hear. You know, the funny thing, uh, interesting thing is I, I told our son, I said, hey, Justin and Tara, you don't know them at all, but they got this really cool YouTube channel. If you watch it from episode one to current, I'll pay you. That's <laughs> so awesome. I just wanted to sit down, I just totally. to sit down and get his mind flowing. It was yep. just, so he's thinking about stuff as he's walking around. Think yeah. Got ideas? 100 bucks, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks. If you finish the entire thing, totally. it's going to be totally worth your while and get your mind going. You're right. Sometimes just listening to war stories, listening to other ideas, seeing from the outside. So I really appreciate it. And I don't want to take too much of your time, especially since you just got there. So, but oh, no, you're good, man. Like I said, you and I, we both like helping people, but it's really easy to help someone who has given you a lot of value. Obviously, you've done that. And I know we're compensating you and stuff, but still, it's like there's an exchange of value there. I'm more than happy to talk to you anytime about anything. So. I appreciate it, and I'm happy no to worries. pay for your time, too, if you let me tell me what to do. We'll figure it out. Yeah, so, we'll figure it out. Good. Sounds good. All right, okay. good. Well, get back to the wife and kids. Have fun. Say hi to everybody. For, by the way, is Rogan going to find places to flip on trampolines while he's traveling, or is he giving that yeah, up while he's gone? I think in Hawaii, we'll probably find a few cliff spots to jump from. I'm not sure about Bali and in Australia. There's definitely places that have trampoline parks, but Europe has some great trampoline places. So we'll find some when we're gone. It may not be as frequent, but it'll be good. <laughs> cool. Well, say hi to everybody for me. And do you want to just set this like recurring for a few weeks now? And yeah, just put it on yeah. this day this time? Perfect. And then, yeah, the time is going to change when we go to Bali and stuff. But we'll be here for four weeks. And then if I ever have a conflict, I'll just let you know. But yeah, let's set it on recurring. That'd be great. Sweet. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Have a wonderful time. And we'll be in touch. Okay, thanks, Greg. We'll talk to you soon. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Let's give it up for Greg Nelson. Once again, just want to give a big thank you to Greg for being so generous and willing to let us all listen in and learn from this coaching call that we did together. You know, I know Greg on a personal level. I've been to his house. I've taken my kids over there to play pickleball. And I've also had the chance to work with him professionally over the last couple months and know that he's insanely smart and a killer attorney. I could go on about other things I know about Greg, about his character, his faith, his family, and all kinds of other things. What I'm trying to say is that by just about any standard, Greg would be defined as a pretty successful individual. But what got you here? won't get you there. And Greg recognizes that and he's ready for that next stage of development and growth in his business, which will also trickle down and into other aspects of his life and those around him. And Greg recognizes that. That's the first step is having that awareness. And for Greg right now, that isn't necessarily about making more money. It's about him not being so bogged down all the time and creating those systems and processes that will give him the time and freedom to do some more of the things he loves, but also get out of the trenches, if you will, and be able to better help and serve his associates and his clients. And the best way he can do that, the best way he'll be able to help them and help more people is actually by getting out of the way more, in a weird way, by doing less. Now, I am in no way implying that making money is easy and you need to work less to make money. No, Greg's put in that initial work that it takes to get something up and into orbit, if you will. But now he's ready to lean more on his team and get out of the way and create those systems and processes that can work without him always being involved and reap those benefits of the time that he's put into and will continue to put into building the machine instead of just being the machine. 
So anyway, it's been super fun working with Greg, both professionally, him helping me, and then being able to flip the script and talk to him more about his business. In fact, we actually had another call this morning. I think there's a lot more great takeaways. So I'll reach out to Greg again, and who knows, maybe we'll have a little mini series and you guys can listen in to a few more of these calls. In the meantime, I'd love to hear from you. Hit me up, justin at millionaireuniversity.com. Let me know what you're liking about the podcast. Let me know what you got out of today's show. If there's any questions, concerns you have, anywhere that you feel stuck, reach out to me. And I'll either respond to you or I'll address it in an upcoming class. In the meantime, think of the one thing that you can do today, this week, that will make the biggest impact on your business and your life. I mean, that's what Greg's doing each week. He's just trying to change and improve one little thing. That's usually what it takes. One little, small, simple thing every day or every week that'll make a dramatic impact on you, on your business, on your life, on your family. So figure out what that one thing is and do that. And then improve on that or add to it as you go. Do that each day and you will be blown away at what happens over time. And with that, we will bring today's lesson to a close. This is Justin Williams, your Chief Millionaire Mentor, signing off. Until next time, class dismissed.